OK, so let's take a look at this pre-scene itself then, and we'll work through this pre-scene um, section by section, basically with me guiding you and giving you my thoughts and comments. And the, the first of these um, videos, what we're going to do in the first video is we're going to go down to just the top of page three. So what I'm going to suggest, and this is the way we're going to work through these, is I'm going to basically assume that you have not read the whole of this case. And what I'm going to do is guide you through section by section. So in a guided guided step by step way. So if you haven't read the first page as of yet, what I suggest you do is go away, um, spend uh, print off the case, go through reading that first page and just the start of the second page down to, but not including Gameco's organizational structure. Take five, ten minutes, read it through, make any notes you want, come on back, pause this video for the moment, come on back, and then I'll take you through it. OK, so do that now and uh, come back to you in a second. OK, so welcome back. So the games, what have we got here then? Well, um, you know, what a great topic for any UK based students, which to be fair is a reasonable uh, proportion of students taking the SEMA exams. Obviously, uh, for UK based students, we've got um, you know, the Olympics that's just happened. And we've seen, can I spell Olympics? <laughs> there we go. I don't think I can, actually. I think I may have got there in the end. OK, so we've got the Olympics that's just happened. And what we've seen is um, we've basically gone through the last seven or eight years of seeing us winning the games in the first place through to the planning of the stadia, building those stadia, some of the issues over building, and particularly all the complaints about funding, where was all the money coming from, and the fact that it took, um, it took, what was it, about, it was cost about 10 billion pounds in the end, and the original budget was something like one to two billion, so it went wildly over costs, or from the original budget at least, although in actual fact, once they'd revised the budget, they stuck to that revised budget, it, to be fair. Um, and then we had the games itself. You may have been lucky enough to go to the games if you were based in the UK. I went to a couple of events myself. I went to see the rowing and I went to um, one of the football games and it was great fun and the whole atmosphere and it was, you know, fantastic event. And now we've got issues over legacy. So if you're a UK based student and you've seen all of that, real great advantage to you actually because you've just got some general knowledge. Now, what I wouldn't say for for anyone else is basically don't do significant new research on um, things like the Olympics, if I can spell it, here we go, um, or other events like the Commonwealth Games and so on. Um, now, when you get to T4 and Top SEMA, you must do that. You are supposed to really know in depth the industry and have real life industry examples up your sleeve. But do you know what? You've got so much on your plate for this. You've got, um, for, for many of you, three new subjects with some really difficult theory in there, particularly in the F3 exam and some of the, the P3 um, sort of financing issues. You've got some really difficult theory. You've got enough to do without having to spend hours and hours researching the industry. What you must do, though, is uh, understand this pre-scene really well and really understand it, get into it, be thinking about the issues that there are in this particular case study. So it's not huge. It's only, um, what are we looking at, five, six pages in length. And so that's the key. But look, if you've got background knowledge, something like the Olympics, great, great um, background. So um, first overriding feeling then on this, as I've already mentioned, is that we've got uh, well, a number of interesting issues. Let's think about it subject by subject. So we've got something like, from an E3 point of view, something like games. It's very unusual because some models are really, really very useful. So we might think about something like sort analysis or mission and values, something like um, pest analysis, something like uh, stakeholder analysis which become very, very useful models in this kind of um, Olympic Games type situation. But we've got some problems. What about models such as Porter's Five Forces, which is all about industry competitiveness? Well, look, we're not, com not competing here. 
that's going to be a very funny model in this particular case. Yes, I know we have suppliers, and we might have some supplier power. Um, do the customers have much power? So we can still think about the issues, but it's not really, you know, the whole idea of five, the five forces model is it's about how profitable is this industry to be, and well, we can't analyze it from that point of view. So that's going to be an unusual one. We'll take a look at that as we go through. Something like Porter's generic strategies. Well, you know, that's the one all about cost leadership and differentiation. Well, look, that's all about competitiveness. How do we set ourselves apart from the competitors? Hmm, that's going to be quite strange. OK, so we're going to find that uh, some of the models are more applicable than others. And we'll go through working that through. OK, let's come down here then. What about the F3 situation? Well, from an F3 point of view, then it's very unusual again. It's not going to be about commercial funding. As we go through, we find that we've got funding from the government that have kind of got some provisional set up funding, but the rest of the fund has got to come from other places. But it's going to be very difficult to do things like um, or weighted average cost of capital calculations or capital asset pricing models or any of those kind of questions just not going to be really relevant in this kind of Funding, you know, most of F3 is set up for commercial funding, not kind of funding uh, uh, games. Interesting, unusual, you know, unusual but interesting. So it's this sort of unusual elements that's going to make this case particularly um, difficult and challenging. P3, uh, it's an ideal topic for P3. Often when I'm teaching P3 classes myself, I will pick on. In fact, for, for many years in the run-up to the Olympics, actually, I was using quite a few examples of risks in the Olympics and so on on my uh, my p3 classes because it's just perfect all the risks of things like uh, um, venues being late security risks reputational risks you know let's put some of these just in just as a starting point so we've got things like security we've got the reputation reputation of the country putting on a a good event in that particular case we've got the risk of um delays and so on and so on and so on. This is the perfect topic for P3. So not an unusual one from that point of view. OK, I think just overriding feeling a kind of nice, interesting topic, at least. You know, it's not like some industries that we see. Anyone that's just recently taken T, the T Railways case study, you know, oh, that was another difficult case study. Actually, I'd much rather have the a kind of Olympic Games style. And it isn't the Olympic Games, bear in mind. It's not the Olympic Games, but that kind of style of, of topic. OK, next key point for you then. Well, um, the first thing in this section that crops up is the kind of overriding control of this particular um, uh, games. And we've got two key stakeholders who are kind of controlling and managing this. We've got someone who would be a kind of equivalent to the IOC, the um, International Olympic um, Committee, who are called the Games Coordinating Committee. And they work on behalf of all of the different countries taking part in the Games, overseeing those Games. So they're going to be a key stakeholder in Mendelo's Matrix, for whom uh, we must uh, consider their goals and values, things like the mission, which we'll come on to in a minute. It's going to be really critical that we um, abide by those in the preparation of this Games. Um, their views are going to be paramount, regular meetings with them as a key stakeholder in Mendelo's Matrix. Remember, Mendelo's Matrix is all about power and interest. They're going to have high power and be absolutely uh, interested. Therefore, we're going to keep them close. We're going to be working well with them, with regular meetings. They're going to be a crucial stakeholder that need to be managed. And then from a second point of view, we've got this um, stakeholder Games Co., who are the company that have been set up within the country to manage it and organize it on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, as part of Games Co., another key stakeholder for them is going to be the government of Country C, who are basically providing um, much of the funding, but um, they are, let's put this in here, key stakeholder. Again, they're going to be another um, key player 
in Mendeleev's matrix who are going to, we're going to have to understand their views, make sure that we're delivering a benefit to the country as a whole and that they are happy with everything. Um, again, in your questions, bear the stakeholders in mind. What you mustn't end up doing is, in any of the subjects, is start recommending something which is against these key stakeholder needs. If it's going to be something the government is not going to be happy with or that the... Um, organizing um, the, the games coordinating committee they're not going to be happy with then it's unlikely that recommendation is going to be something which is a good solid recommendation so do bear these key stakeholders in mind okay of course another key stakeholder while we're talking about stakeholders again in Mendelow's matrix um, you know one of the purpose of this project is for the prosperity of country C and the whole area of which the games will take place. So another important stakeholder are the people of country C. So that we are producing a games that will benefit them as well. Okay, so we have this company Games Co controlling and managing. Again, if we're just thinking from a P3 point of view, they are going to be the key control. If thinking E3, this is going to be about um, the overriding organization in the organizational structure. So, um, yep, really important. So these two key high level controlling elements, um, controlling, managing. We've got the games coordinating committee. We've got the day-to-day the -day games co-management. Next key thing I want to pick out from this section, this section is the mission statement. So we've got two mission statements here. The first of these is the Games Coordinating Committee's mission statement. Now this is a mission statement for all games, not just this one coming up. This is for all games for the future going forward. And then a little bit lower down we've got the mission statement for Games Co, which includes the missions of, C, of GCC. So that's kind of part of it with a little bit more focused on this particular um, this particular case. Now remember the mission is about the overriding purpose. Why are we in business? What are we doing uh, here? What's our overriding purpose? And crucially in this particular case it says that this is untouchable. Now this is going to be very important in your case because anything that's in this mission statement you must consider as part of your questions. Let me give you an example. The first of these is that we must encourage and promote ethical competition in sport and achieve high levels of sustainability. So both of these are about ethics and CSR. Now, if you see an issue that might be compromising on ethics or compromising on CSR and sustainability, then you need to be saying this is inconsistent with the mission of GCC and as such, it is not something we should be considering or it's, we should be rejecting this as a proposal or something along those lines. And so one, one thing I, I start to find is, is that um, and you'll probably find this is, is you'll read through the games, you'll work through our videos and you'll get a really good in-depth analysis of the case. But as time goes on and as you start spending more time worrying about um, key elements of theory and practicing past exam questions and so on, you'll gradually move further and further away from the games and its mission and things like that. But you must bear those in mind at all times. So in the exam, you must take things back to this background we're seeing in the pre-scene. And you know, while I'm on that topic, actually, very important, just remember that this is background information only. When you get into the exam on the day of the exam, you will find the question itself with the new unseen information. And the exam is on the unseen information. So a warning for you. Let's kind of pop this in here, actually. Um, let's pop it in up here. OK, because it's quite generic, this particular point. A big warning for you is do not go in to the exam with too many preconceived ideas. Okay, now you want to analyze this, you want to understand it, but don't make clear decisions as how you're gonna take this business forward too much. Okay, what you need to do is just see this as background. Now, with that in mind, then the mission is absolutely vital 
background information for you. It gives you the context in which to deal with the issues you find in the exam. And you can relate your points back to this mission. Is it consistent with the mission? Okay, let's just expand that out, make that um, um, fully visible on the screen. Good, great. So let's go back to the mission. So ethics and CSR are our two first ones that are in there. What else have we got here? Is to cooperate with public and private sector organisations in the preparation for and staging the games, promote sport and healthy lifestyles amongst young people, and promotes the game's values of excellence, unity, and achievement. So excellence, doing things well. Unity, everyone acting together, working as one. Achievement, working hard, doing well, and I suppose winning the uh, winning the the, the particular. Um, event that somebody is in. Now, that gives us some hints as issues that might come up in the exam. Okay, so what are possible issues that might be up here then? So we might see something like, well, ethics and CSR coming out of sustainability and ethical competition. You know, we know that ethics and CSR Bro broaches all three topics and can be something that can come up well in any SEMA exam. That's the way SEMA like examining ethics. It's been throughout all your studies so far virtually and it can come up anywhere. And this is hinting at, look, this is important in this business and therefore in this organisation and therefore, yes, absolutely. I'd be amazed if we didn't see something on ethics and CSR because something like the Olympics, if we were thinking of that, must be seen to be acting ethically, fairly on all, all competitors, acting sustainability. Now, sustainability is going to be key when it comes to building of venues. Um, and so that's going to be something that in contracts and so on is going to be really critical. OK, another key issue is going to be contracting. So particularly linking through to the public and private sector organisations, I'd be stunned if somewhere in some of the different topics we didn't see issues around contracting over uh, venues, relationships with suppliers, um, the, the whole production of the games. That's going to be important. And again, important, we cooperate with those public and private sector organisations as part of that. OK. Um, we could see something um, around the point on promote sport and healthy lifestyles amongst young people. So as well as the games itself, it's going to be about the promotion of those games and also the, the kind of underlying values of what are we trying to sit, trying to achieve. I'll put in here legacy. Legacy, of course, for those of you in the UK, um, be very aware of this. There's been a lot of talk about legacy. You know what's happening with the Olympic Stadium, current state of affairs. It looks like West Ham are going to have that, and it's going to become a, a football stadium for most of the year round. But that's taken a long time to do. How are we using all those venues? What's the legacy? Is it going to improve sport in the UK or people's lifestyles and so on? There was um, research recently that suggested that something like over a million people in the UK are now exercising more as a result of the Olympic Games, and uh, you know, it's those kind of elements that could be, you know, how are we going to plan for that legacy early on? That could be an issue that could come up, particularly as part of something like um, the E3. OK, and importantly, this point about this is untouchable. That should be a clear guide to you when you're reviewing it. That No, we cannot do anything. That To me, that's the examiner telling us that we cannot not do this. We cannot be seen to be accepting some idea or some project or some um, some new proposal that is not achieving these missions, this mission. And of course, that goes down to the mission, vision and values of Games Co. So on top of this, then, then we've got to deliver this on time and on budget. And of course, as accountants on budget is going to be key. Um, that could be part of all three of the different papers. It's going to be a risk in P3. Actually, on time is going to be a key risk in P3. Um, Let's put some of these points in. So uh, let's put key risk there. This is going to be a key risk just there. So we've got risks. We've got on budget being an F3 element. Really, really hard. I've been working through working with our um, our F3 mock writer 
um, just over recent days, really thinking about what what scenarios we're putting into this. And you know, F3 is a really unusual, interesting one. Absolutely something about the budget, whether we're going to hit budget, some kind of costing analysis is going to be kind of classic E3, uh, sorry, F3 type territory um, in, in my view. Um, okay, E3, just the whole process of the strategy, managing the project and so on could easily come into on time and on budget as well so um okay risk and of course p3 is all about control let's put this in here too so how are we going to control in order to be on time and on budget so control over budgets control over time management project management i think is going to be really critical in this particular case you know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that although project management really is going back um really back to the the theory that you've done at um, e2 i think you should go back and not learn it in depth but have a quick review of it because the control is going to be very much project-based control which to be fair is a relatively small part of the p3 syllabus but it's something that's absolutely vital in this particular case. Let me just give you an example. We had a similar sort of case with a building company at the top SEMA level about, what was it, about two years ago now. And um, much to my surprise, after years of teaching that subject, um, to everyone's surprise, suddenly we got a, um, a critical path analysis at top SEMA. We've never seen it since. We've never seen it before. Now, I doubt you'll see it in any of your topics here, but just being a reminder of what that is, I think, is going to be useful. So project control, um, going back to your, your E2, is going to be something to, to review, to read through. Don't go um, read learning and, and learning how to do um, critical path analysis and so on, but just be aware of those topics. OK, so um, so we have a specific mission then for Games Co, which is also in accordance with the mission of uh, GCC. Okay, um, uh, tell us a little bit more here about um, how they are prepared. But this is an important point here. This is an F3 point. Country C's government is clear it does not intend to support the games beyond the funding it has already invested. Okay, so therefore that's going to be very important about where the money is coming from. We're looking at things like uh, sponsorship, ticket sales, good management of the project um, is going to be key in order to think about where, where funding is coming from. So that's going to be important too. Good. Some values set out here, um, operating fairly, responsibility, keyword in there, stakeholders. Stakeholder mapping um, kind of come up in different subjects, actually could come up in E3, could come up in kind of P3 get those in there I think you know crying out for a stakeholder mapping type question really is this particular case make sure you know Mendeleev's matrix you can analyze those and you can talk about the importance and power and interest and how to use those that's going to be very important good so that is my overview of the first page and that's the end of video one and for some of you um you know the remaining videos are all part of our our paid for video series and you know those people that are gonna uh, buy that and i hope you've benefited from this video and will think yeah it's going to be worth my while actually getting the the benefit of the the subsequent videos um so and i hope that's going to be many of you but for those of you that it isn't basically my guidance to you now is to go through doing an analysis much in the way that uh, that i've been doing this doing your own analysis of what ace elements mean for the strategy for each of the different subjects okay um if you are just trying to decide whether or not it's worth your while signing up for the rest of the video series, all I will say is, is that well, what I'm going to be covering on this is really what would end up taking a day of a teaching course. We're talking about what you might end up paying £200 for if you went to um, you know, a BPP or a Kaplan um, um, to, actually, to actually learn this material. And the videos are much, much, much cheaper than that. So I'm hoping that I'm going to give you some good value. I'm hoping I'm going to, going to guide you all towards not just how to analyse this case study, but also your preparation for the exam coming forward, including exam technique and approach. So I hope you'll, you'll think that is of, uh, of value going forward. 
and um, yeah, and I hope you'll sign up. So uh, so so please do. Um, if not, then and this is the last time I talk to you. Then I do wish you the best of luck going through and approaching your exams. If you do, I will see you in the next video. Hi, and welcome to the Strategic Pre-Scene video series covering the games pre-scene with me, Nick Best. I'm the Managing Director at Australian Financial Training. And what I want to do in this video series is use my weight of experience. I've been teaching SEMA now for, oh, what is it, 15, 16 years now. And use all of that experience, having taught all the different subjects at SEMA, particularly with a focus on strategic level and um, the, the top SEMA and T4 case study over recent years. I want to use that experience to guide you through the pre-scene for the games and tell you my thoughts on the types of issues that are going to arise, how we're going to apply the strategic models in E3 to this particular case, what the funding issues are for F3, what the risks are for P3, and basically just um, take you through the whole of this pre-scene, giving you my guidance and support, telling you about the kind of issues that I think that we're going to be facing in this exam, the kind of problems. And it is a really interesting case study. It's one of the most interesting ones that we've seen in a long time. Um, a game, something like an Olympic Games or a Commonwealth Games, throws up a whole range of different issues than we would have seen if this was just a normal bog standard commercial company. We've got issues such as, well, how do we apply some of the strategic models like Porter's Five Forces, which is all about competitiveness, when there's no competition? Where's the funding coming from in, in F3? Well, we can't do all our normal funding approaches as we would in a commercial business and so on. So there are some really unusual, it's an unusual case and there are some unusual issues. And what I want to do in this video series is take you through the, the issues as I see them and really help guide you in terms of really understanding this pre-scene to take you through towards your exam. So there's a whole range of different um, videos in this series. The first of these videos is a basic run through the whole of the pre-scene doing a full strategic review. There's going to be a bit of a focus on E3 and the strategic models, but I'm going to cover all the subjects as I go through doing that, talking about some of the key issues, um, how we might apply some of the, the various different models in the various different subjects, and as I say, with a particular focus on some of the, uh, the E3 models, but with relevance to all the different subjects as we go through there. What we're then going to do is have a specific look at E3. I'm going to work through my full strategic analysis. What I should say, actually, is that um, anyone that doesn't buy the full video series, you can get my full strategic analysis as a uh, PDF download um, from our website at stranty.com. So do go and get that whether or not you buy the full series or not. Um, you know, that's a really useful thing to you, particularly in this exam, because some of the models in E3 are relevant and some aren't. And it's important you're really aware of that. So I'm going to go through my full strategic analysis, explaining to you not just how we apply the models to um, to this particular case study, but I'm going to do a little review of the different models as well. So hopefully that'll be a good bit of revision for you, too. I'm then going to do a financial analysis. Um, we've got some numbers at the end of this case. We've got a budget for the um, delivery of the games, but I'm also going to, which I want to go through with you, but I'm also going to just analyse the financial elements of the exam and think about the whole of this paper from a funding and financing point of view. There's no doubt that um, something like the games is very unusual from a fin financing or funding point of view compared to most previous case studies. So in what way is that unusual? What can we pull out from the case in relation to that, in addition to doing um, a financial analysis of the budget for all the games? OK, now, one subject that I think that this case is really ideal for is risk analysis. And what we do in our P3 video is look at all the possible risks that are likely to be faced in this exam. Again, with a focus on what type of subjects and topics are going to come up in P3. But, um, yeah, what are the key risks? How can we apply risk analysis to this particular case study? I then want to just quickly summarise 
what I think are the most likely issues, the most likely topics that are going to come up in the exam. Uh, a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, this will help to focus you on your study, to focus on the key areas, but it will also help you to prepare so you can actually um, prepare possible questions that will come up. And I'm going to do that for all the three different subjects. So we'll go through each of the subjects looking at the most likely issues. To be honest with you, I will be doing that as I go through all of those different areas. I'll be thinking about that all the way through, but I just want to summarize that in one video for you. Um, finally, I'm going to give you a full strategic level guide. My summary of what the examiner expects at this level, it's worth bearing in mind that there are much greater expectations on you as a student at strategic level compared to at managerial. You are expected to analyze in more depth, to explain points in a different way from that what you were doing at strategic level. And many students really don't grasp that and don't understand that, particularly when I'm, um, I'm working with students that have failed. I'm mean, working with someone at the moment who's, um, who's failed I think it was eight times he was telling me. When you've got someone that's in that kind of position, what are the key issues? Where are they missing out? What's uh, one of the key issues to understand? What is it at a strategic level that um, that people are not getting? What are the expectations, and why often do people fail? The idea being is that then you can actually make sure that you um, don't fall into those traps. I'm going to give you a brief guide to exam technique at this particular level, um, particularly focus on writing style and approach and the way you approach and plan and prepare for questions um, and finish that up with a guide to how you go about preparing as your approach towards the exam. It's very very difficult strategic from the point of view particularly when you're taking this for the first time when you've got three subjects so you've probably got more volume than you've ever managed before then they throw in a case study and you've got to be aware and prepare for that so what are the best ways to prepare and what do you need to be doing over coming weeks and months depending on how long it is before your exam to actually prepare so i'm going to give you that strategic level guide as part of our pre-seen video series good right that's the introduction to um, what the video series is going to be and in this first video what we're now going to do is move on to the pre-seen itself and start to analyze that pre-seen